Hi, I'm Casey Arriaga. I am a clinician and author here at Windmill Wellness Ranch, a treatment center for addiction and mental health. So one of the things we want to talk about today is looking at marijuana, THC. Is it in fact addictive? Is it all natural? Is it good for you? Is it bad for you? What's kind of the deal? And if it does seem to be a problem, what can you do about it? So we'll start right off the top. We're just gonna look and see, first of all, is it even a drug? And this is worth talking about because marijuana or THC use has increased tremendously among younger population. And part of the reason for that is because a lot of young kids today do not think that it is in fact a drug. They'll say it's all natural, therefore it can't be a drug. So first of all, we wanna look and say THC, in case I didn't mention this, THC is the active ingredient in marijuana. It's the thing that makes it psychoactive or have an effect on your brain that you're looking for. It makes it pleasant, can feel relaxing. Um, it can, in significant quality, uh, significant quantities, have a hallucinogenic effect. So you might see or hear things, stuff like that. So THC is what makes marijuana popular. So without that, and there are actually some breeds of uh, marijuana that have been bred without THC, but as you can imagine, they're not very popular. So it's popular among kids because it is a drug. There's no scientific definition for drug that wouldn't include marijuana, just like any scientific definition of drug would include alcohol as well. But in the same way, socially, people don't necessarily think of it that way. So one of the things why a lot of young people don't think of marijuana as being a drug or as being a problem is they'll say it's all natural, it's from a plant, but actually almost all of our drug substances that we use, whether they're abused or otherwise, start out as actually plant material. So cocaine comes from a plant, um, marijuana from a plant, alcohol from plant. So it's a lot of plant-based substances. So the fact that it comes from a plant doesn't actually make it okay. I'll name a few other things that are all natural. So lead is all natural, but you should not ingest lead. Arsenic is all natural. You should not ingest arsenic, poisonous mushrooms, same sort of thing. So just because something's all natural, it's based in a plant, doesn't actually make it good for you or okay. So there is research showing that THC can be helpful for certain conditions like chronic pain. It can help some people with uh, mild anxiety, things like that, starts to take a little bit of the edge off. The catch with that is the research that's being done does not use anything like the THC levels that people use recreationally. And what's happening is as marijuana has become legalized, we're finding that the THC levels are increasing dramatically. So we have THC levels that are relatively low in like smaller percentiles, in the 1990s up until today where we're getting up into high percentiles you can actually find like 75 percent thc level versus what we might have seen like 15 20 25 percent uh, in earlier decades and this also has an influence because as it's being legalized legislators are older people right who are thinking oh this is kind of like the pot that i smoked in high school but it's really not when it comes to the thc levels so there is zero research showing that the kind of thc levels that people are experiencing in recreational use today is helpful for anxiety in fact what's been shown is it actually increases depression it can increase suicidality and one of the biggest ones is it can increase symptoms of schizophrenia to the point where there's some question of if somebody maybe was predisposed or at risk for schizophrenia, but maybe it wouldn't have developed, it may develop now because they're smoking high quantities of THC. So can it be addictive? Well, the shorter answer is yes. It can absolutely be, become addictive. And especially with the THC levels increasing, we're starting to see more and more of that to the point where we are now seeing syndromes where people can run into serious health risks and actually be hospitalized for overuse of THC. So even if it can be used in small quantities, somebody who becomes addicted is going to tend to develop a tolerance, and we see that. They're gonna to tend to have withdrawals when they stop, and we'll see that. Sometimes people think there are no withdrawals from THC, and one of the reasons for that is because THC tends to store up in our fat cells. And so it'll sort of leach out slowly over time and people don't experience it as much. But again, as THC levels have gone up and people have developed more of a tolerance, more of an addictive pattern with it, then we can see that people are definitely going through withdrawal. So they might notice that they're a lot more irritable, that they are more anxious, that they're having trouble sleeping, things like that. Because insomnia can also be increased with increased THC use. So bottom line with all of this is that THC can be addictive, it can become a problem, it can push mental health symptoms further and kind of over the edge for some people, and so help is going to be required. So what can you do if you notice that this is happening? Well, first and foremost, there are 12-step groups for THC use. So Marijuana Anonymous is the largest of them. There are actually three different groups that were formed. Um, mostly in the 1990s and early 2000s, and they all combined into Marijuana Anonymous sometime later. Um, but obviously, if people were out there looking for a solution, there was a problem. Otherwise, you don't bother doing all those kind of things. They have a great book called Life with Hope, which is the basic text. So you might get a hold of the book if you think you have a problem. You might check out some meetings, read up online. 
For some people, that's not going to be enough though. They're going to find that regardless of doing some of those things, they still find themselves slipping back into it. And that's where you might seek more professional help. We always say go with the lowest level of help that actually gets you to where you want to be, which in this case, for most people would end up being total sobriety. I know it'd be tempting to say, hey, I'm just going to cut back. But once addiction is addiction, it's really hard to say, I'm just going to do a little bit you're gonna end up finding yourself returning back to old patterns of use and then typically ramping up from there. So to avoid that, we would recommend seeking professional help. So that might be an addiction counselor who has specific education and training, might be an IOP program, such as we offer here at Windmill Wellness Ranch, or it might be inpatient treatment, coming in for some residential stay to be able to get completely away from it for a while, because for some people that's what they're gonna need, be able to allow that natural leaching process to happen where all the THC is out of your system. You can learn how to live your life without it and find out that life actually turns out to be much better and you didn't actually need it in the first place. So a lot of people are looking and saying, hey, the fact that it's legal means that it must not be a problem. But I'll remind everybody, alcohol has been legal for all of our lifetimes. There's still a lot of drunk driving crashes. A lot of people go to the hospital. A lot of people get in themselves in a lot of addictive trouble with alcohol, even though it is legal. So the fact that it's legal in your state or your home area where you want it to be does not actually mean that it's not a problem or it can't turn into a problem for some of the people using it. So for family members, I know looking from the outside, there can be concern, oh my God, they hit a joint once or they were vaping once and therefore it must be a problem. And that's not necessarily the case. You wanna look out for the signs of addiction just as you look out for the signs of addiction to any other drug. So you might start to notice behavior patterns are changing more dramatically. With marijuana, one of the well-known things that people talk about is sort of a motivation syndrome where you notice people are just being less and less motivated to do anything in their lives besides to use the drug or just kind of hang out. Um, people actually can get into significant weight gain sometimes around marijuana because it does inspire appetite and usually not for anything terribly nutritious. So you might notice eating patterns are changing significantly. And if you have a teenager, this might be hard to tell because some of those things might just be part of the natural development cycle. But you will notice over time, it's like, hmm, you know what, this is not getting better. In fact, it seems to be getting worse. My person just wants to sit in the room all day and smoke. Well, that's not a good sign for any drug or any behavior. So just noticing just like any other addiction. And if you're not sure, you can always consult addiction professionals. Somebody can, you can call us here at Windmill Wellness Ranch or you can talk to other addiction professionals and just get an idea, is the range of behavior that I'm seeing as a family member, should I be concerned? But again, don't think necessarily, well, I smoked a little pot in high school and college that your kids are actually getting the same stuff because they're getting something way more potent. And also sometimes they're getting it through vaping. And we've noticed a big, you know, they talk about THC or pot as being a gateway drug, but actually nicotine use in vaping is a really big gateway into THC use through vaping. And some parents may not be aware you can in fact vape THC. So it'd be really hard to tell because you're not gonna smell it. They may not smell any different. And a lot of kids don't think of vaping as being a problem in the first place. So they may not realize they're walking into nicotine, which is one of the more addictive substances known to man. And from there, it's really easy to jump right into THC and start going downhill from there. Marijuana with THC as the natural main ingredient is an addictive substance. And if you think there's a problem, then seek help, seek information, get the facts and get, get what you need so that you can get your life back on track. Thanks for watching. We know that if you've seen this video, chances are someone you love is struggling with addiction and we want to help. We have a free family course at windmillfamilycourse.com. Sign up to check out some of the most important topics that help family members around this struggle. Your family has hope.